everybody happy wednesday to you all and welcome to open arms lunch and learn series my name is mike marcott i am the events manager with open arms of minnesota happy rainy wednesday to you all hope you're staying dry i know our pack out team that some of them got pretty wet um we still have to deliver meals to our clients no matter the weather so i uh, hope you're staying dry at home and thank you for tuning in and joining us live um whether you're watching us right now wednesday at noon um, or if you're watching us on demand, we appreciate you taking your time to join us to learn more about our registered dietitian team here at Open Arms of Minnesota. I am in my place in downtown Minneapolis, but in our uh, office in South Minneapolis, uh, we have Bree and Jade. I'll introduce them in just a second. Um, and today you have the opportunity to learn about our in-house team of registered dietitians who work directly with our clients. And they're going to explain what they do and they're also going to answer your questions. So if you are watching us live here on YouTube, um, you can ask your questions right on the box over, is it over there? Um, on the right hand side of your page. So you can ask uh, your questions and uh, we would love to answer them. We have a bunch that already have come in. Um, so we'll ask those coming up in a few minutes. Uh, if you're not familiar, Open Arms is a nonprofit that makes and delivers medically tailored meals to more than 1,400 clients, their caregivers, and dependents every week, free of charge, which is amazing. And Open Arms, we are busier than ever. Since the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Minnesota in mid-March, we have seen a 30% increase in the number of clients that we serve. So more than 1,400 clients every single uh, week uh, receive meals from us, uh, plus their caregivers and dependents um, receiving meals from Open Arms Minnesota. We're expected to deliver 700,000 meals in the year 2020, 700,000 meals. We just delivered our 7 millionth meal uh, in late June. Uh, before I introduce you to two of our registered dietitians here at Open Arms of Minnesota, I want to share two important things with you. Uh, number one, as summer winds down, we are in desperate need of volunteers to help in our kitchen and uh, deliver meals to clients. I have a delivery shift on Friday. I'm heading out to the West Metro. So um, if you're a client watching um, out in the West Metro, hopefully see you Friday. Um, Shifts, whether you volunteer as a delivery driver or in our kitchen, are approximately two and a half hours. If you haven't volunteered with us before, you can start with a one hour orientation session at our office in South Minneapolis. You just have to head to openarmsmn.org to sign up and we host those sessions once a week um, or so at our office in South Minneapolis that I mentioned. Also, we are extremely excited. This is big. This just came through last night after hours. It was like 5.30 for me. I got this really cool email. It had a red exclamation point on it. So we're really excited about this new bipartisan bill introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives. It's called the Medically Tailored Home Delivered Meal Demonstration Pilot Act of 2020. Holy mouthful. The Medically Tailored Home Delivered Meal Demonstration Pilot Act of 2020. You can also call it the MTM bill, all right? So what does that mean? This bill is establishing a Medicare pilot program that would show the link between our medically tailored meals, which you're gonna hear all about today during our lunch and learn session, and the health of critically ill seniors. Open Arms of Minnesota and other organizations in the National Food is Medicine Coalition 
support this bill. Um, and we're super excited about this um, new bipartisan bill introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives um, just this week. Um, so stay tuned. Um, we're going to be sharing a lot of updates about that bill um, and its progress and how that could impact what we do here at Open Arms of Minnesota. All right. Now it's the main event. Um, I am delighted and honored to turn it over to two lovely ladies who are at our main headquarters, our mothership in South Minneapolis. Um, I'm turning it over to uh, Bree and Jade. I'm gonna have the ladies introduce themselves. Um, Bree told Brits Hofer, I practiced that for the last 30 minutes. I hope I didn't slaughter it, Bree. Did I? Did I do a pretty good job? No, you got it. Ah, fantastic. Okay, so Bree, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, tell us how long you've been with Open Arms um, and uh, kind of what drew you to this organization as a registered dietitian? Sure, yes. So I am Bree and I am the Nutrition Services Director, one of the dietitians. I have been at Open Arms for a little bit over four years. And prior to working here, I worked in a couple of different settings focused on clinical nutrition and corporate wellness. And I was just looking for something in which I could have more of an impact on the community. So that is what, um, what brought me here. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Bree. Um, we also have uh, Jade Bringleson another registered dietitian with Open Arms in Minnesota. Jade, same idea for you. Uh, tell us how long you've been with Open Arms and what drew you to the organization. Yeah, so I'm Jade. I've been with Open Arms since the beginning of 2019. I work primarily with one of our healthcare partnerships with Blue Cross and Blue Shield and serving those clients that we serve. And similar with Bree, I wanted to kind of serve the community more closely with food, um, outside of the hospital setting, and that's what really drew me. I mean, the mission of Open Arms to nourish mind, body, and soul, that's really what drew me in. And that's a great mission. Uh, that's one reason why I, I am one of your coworkers. So uh, for today's Lunch and Learn, uh, Bree is going to take us on this journey, um, and she's going to explain what medically tailored meals entail and what this team of registered dietitians, which I think is really cool that you guys are in-house dietitians. We don't have to outsource dietitians. We have them on our staff. Um, what you provide our clients. So Bree, I'm going to turn things over to you. Perfect. Great. All right. So this presentation is going to provide an overview of all the main responsibilities that the dietitians and dietetic technicians on our team have at open arms. Um, I will be presenting the main portion of the presentation and then Jade is here to help with answering questions at the end. So you might be wondering who is the backbone of the nutrition program and as Mike has been mentioning the backbone of the nutrition program includes our dietitians and our dietetic technicians. We currently have four full-time dietitians on staff in addition to one dietetic technician. Open Arms has actually had dietitians on staff for many years, but it's just in the last couple years or so that we have been able to expand to having more than one dietitian on staff. So that just shows how much that the nutrition program has grown in a really short amount of time, which is exciting. As far as what um, kind of the overall um, aspect of what the dietitians do here is that we are the nutrition experts on staff who help to champion the food and nutrition related aspects of our mission. We help to exemplify the benefits of the medically tailored meals that we are providing and help increase our food is medicine approach to keep our services relevant and evidence-based. Our dietitians work really closely with our kitchen and our client services team to make sure that our clients nutritional needs are met to the best of our abilities. And then I'm also just going to back up really quick here to talk about what a registered dietitian and what a dietetic technician even is. 
So what a registered dietitian or an RD is, um, they are licensed and qualified to provide nutrition advice to individuals across the lifespan. In order to get that RD credential, dietitians must go through at least a four year bachelor's degree and then complete a dietetic internship, which involves 1200 hours of supervised practice. After that, they have to pass a registration exam and then they have to complete a certain amount of continuing education credits every five years. And then dietetic technicians, so they are educated and trained at the technical level of nutrition and dietetics practice. And they work under the supervision of dietitians when they are in direct client care. To get that dietetic technician credential, they must go through a two-year degree with supervised practice hours. They also have to pass a registration exam and then complete continuing education every five years. So next, we are going to talk about our medically tailored menus. I know that everybody's really interested in learning more about what those menus are and how we go about planning them. I will mention that this is a topic that we could probably focus an entire lunch and learn on because it's very complex, um, but this is going to provide you with kind of a basic overview. So what is, what is a medically tailored meal? There is an actual definition for that. According to the Food is Medicine Coalition, a medically tailored meal is a meal that has been designed and approved by a registered dietitian to meet medical nutrition therapy needs for a variety of disease states. As most of you know, our medically tailored meals are central to our mission and the menu planning process for all of the different illnesses that we serve is, is very complex. We have nutrition guidelines or nutrition specifications that we update continually based on current research. Um, nutrition science is always evolving, it's always changing. So sometimes we have to update our nutrition specs three times a year. Sometimes we only have to update them one time a year. It just really depends on, on what is being focused on in the nutrition science world. Our dietitians approve the menus at, at both of our kitchens. So we, not everybody knows about this, but we actually have two kitchens. One of them is here at our 2500 Bloomington location. And then we also have the Kitchen of Opportunities, which is a kitchen located a few blocks away. And out of that kitchen, we are producing meals for Meals on Wheels sites throughout the Twin Cities. At Open Arms, the meals that we are producing for our clients, our clients have the option to choose between four medically tailored menus and those include our bland menu option, which is planned specifically for those who might be having trouble tolerating really spicy foods or who are having trouble chewing and swallowing. We also have a renal menu or a kidney friendly menu. And that one is planned specifically for our clients who have end stage renal disease or ESRD. It is also known as kidney failure. And in ESRD individuals, their, their kidneys are not able to filter out, filter their blood for specific nutrients. So things like potassium and phosphorus and sodium build up in their blood and that can cause negative health effects. So on our renal menu, we make sure to limit the, those nutrients to make sure that, um, that we're meeting their needs. We also have a heart healthy menu that is low in sodium and saturated fat. So that one is planned specifically for our clients who have heart conditions like heart failure, heart disease, as well as any 
heart health risk factors like high blood pressure, high cholesterol. That one is also kind of like our standard menu option. So our general, generally healthy option that would be recommended to really, really any client who's just looking for, for something that um, meets their needs. And then the fourth menu that we have is a vegetarian menu. I also want to mention that all four of our menus are controlled for sodium and carbohydrates. So any clients who are diagnosed with diabetes, really any of our menus are appropriate for them because our carb content is, is consistent across the board. We are also able to provide our meals in a modified texture so or a pureed texture for those who are having more severe chewing or swallowing issues. And then for clients who might be having um, struggling with symptoms like nausea and vomiting, we can provide them with what we call nausea care packs, which are just packs of foods that are more soothing to the stomach and easy to tolerate, like applesauce, yogurt, things like that um, for clients who are struggling with those symptoms. As far as the kitchen of opportunities, so the menus at that kitchen are a little bit different and the, the meals out of that kitchen are a little bit different too. So um, one of the major differences between the Meals on Wheels meals and the Open Arms meals is that Meals on Wheels clients have, they receive a delivery of one meal a day versus our clients at Open Arms receive one weekly delivery that includes about 12 meals for their week. The meals at the Kitchen of Opportunities have to follow what's called the Title III nutrition guidelines, which are under the Older Americans Act. And those are low sodium, they're also carb controlled. There's a new menu every quarter. Our, one of our dietitians, Rachel, is actually focused on working closely with the Kitchen of Opportunities staff to make sure that those meals are nutritionally sound for the seniors that we're serving out of that kitchen. So then when it comes to the planning of the menus, how does that work? So our super talented chefs and food services directors are the ones who write the recipes and come up with the menu backbone as far as what goes on it. After we have the recipes, the dietitians then analyze those recipes with a software and then we determine if the recipe meets the specifications for the diet that we are planning for. After we are done analyzing the recipes, then we will provide feedback to our chefs as far as if the recipe is approved, if it needs some tweaks, or maybe the, the recipe just isn't going to work for our menus altogether, and we might have to make a recommendation for what to put on the menu instead. As far as how we decide what menu items to include on or what types of dishes to include on the menus that's based on a variety of different factors um, the number one is client feedback so our clients can call into the client services department the nutrition department at any point to provide feedback about the food they can tell tell us what they like what they really don't like and provide suggestions for things that they would like to see on the menus in the future so that's a major part of how we determine um, what goes on the menu and what changes that we're going to make. And then, of course, the, how we determine what go, goes on the menus is just based on medical needs and based on recommendations that are provided by reputable organizations like the American Heart Association and the National Kidney Foundation. Those organizations all have guidelines that they put out as far as like the, the types of foods that individuals with Ill, with certain illnesses um, should be including in their diets. I will also mention that there is um, a, what's called a clinical committee underneath 
the Food is Medicine Coalition or BIMIC, which is sort of like the, the umbrella organization that Open Arms falls under. It's a, a group of organizations throughout the United States that are doing similar, similar work to us. And the clinical committee is a group of dietitian leaders from all the different organizations that help to um, write nutrition specifications and come up with ideas for meals to include on the diets and things like that. So that is another another way that we um, we determine what goes on the menus. So now that you know all about our medically tailored menus, I am going to talk about our nutrition counseling and nutrition education services that the dietitians provide. So every single one of our clients has the option to speak with a dietitian while they are on service. They can call the nutrition team anytime that they have questions or they want to figure out what menu is best for them and things like that. And the nutrition counseling and education is completely free of cost to the individual. Sometimes nutrition counseling and education is as simple as helping clients decide what menu is best for them, but in some instances, clients would like more support from the dietitians in reaching a specific goal that they have, such as like increasing their strength or having better control over their blood sugar levels. In these cases, they'll have actual scheduled appointments with the dietitians and potentially further follow-up with, with the dietitians if needed. Our RD team also reaches out directly to clients who are deemed as high risk upon application. So a client who might be deemed as high risk would be somebody who has a severe malnutrition diagnosis. And then um, on our client applications, we also have a question that says something along the lines of, would you like to talk to a dietitian while you are on service? And if they answer yes to that question, then they will also receive a call from one of the RDs while, while they're on service. Um, another important aspect of the nutrition, education, and counseling services that I want to mention is that our dietitians are here to connect clients with other food resources if they need them. So at this time, we are actually not providing 100% of our clients' nutritional needs with their deliveries. So that means that they do need to supplement the meals that we're sending with, with additional groceries. So our dietitians might help connect them with other community resources that ensure that they are getting the nutrition that they need. Um, an example of something that the RDs might help clients with is um, referring them to the SNAP program or the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or um, helping them find a food pantry that's in their area or helping them um, figure out like, transportation to grocery stores and things like that. Um, also, the, this part of our services is even more important during these um, during the pan pandemic because many of our clients aren't aren't even able to to leave their homes right now. So some of these additional community resources um, are really really important. Um, and then another thing about the nutrition education services is that sometimes clients opt out of having conversations with the dietitians over the phone. And in those cases, the dietitians can provide them with written nutrition education materials. So that is the nutrition education and counseling piece. The next thing that we will talk about is healthcare partnerships. Um, this is another aspect of the nutrition program that we could do an entire pre pre presentation about. Um, a couple members of our team, including Jade, are responsible for helping to champion the success of our healthcare contracts. 
in which we have partnered with certain healthcare companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield that are actually reimbursing us for the nutrition education and meals that we are providing to their members or their clients. The, the RDs are responsible for conducting outreach, onboarding, and once again, providing nutrition education to these individuals. Healthcare partnerships are really important to open arms and organizations like us. This kind of goes along with the medically tailored meals bill that, that Mike was talking about earlier. Um, because the meals that we are providing really are, they are healthcare. Um, they have benefits beyond what meets the eye, such as reduced healthcare costs, improved health outcomes, reducing length of hospital stays, and so on. Um, so that is that. Um, and I, I think that's all that we have to say about healthcare partnerships. Um, the next topic that we will go into is the dietetic internship program that we have available at Open Arms. Um, so I mentioned earlier that in order to become a registered dietitian, you must go through a, uh, a dietetic internship. And what that entails is um, students have to rotate through several different um, several different locations and areas of dietetics, such as food service, clinical, and community. And Open Arms is actually a community rotation site for dietetic internship programs. Um, while we have had lots of changes to our dietetic internships this year because of COVID, during a typical year, we host up to 30 interns each year. And our RDs are responsible for mentoring them and assigning them projects and just helping them meet the communi community competencies that they need to become registered dietitians. Dietetic interns have the opportunity to participate in a variety of different activities while they are at open arms. They get to go out and help with meal deliveries, help out in the kitchen, and then of course, work closely with the dietitians on certain projects that we have going on. Next, I am going to talk a little bit about our summer food service program. So Leah, during her Lunch and Learn a couple of weeks ago mentioned a little bit about this. I'm gonna go into a little more detail. Um, so the summer food service program is actually a program that we run that is completely separate from our core program meals. The Summer Food Service Program is a federally funded state administered program. Um, and Open Arms has been a sponsor for this program since 2011, in which we partner with two sites in the neighborhood, providing healthy meals to kids during the summer months when they are not in school to, to get school lunches. Our dietitian team handles kind of the behind the scenes work that goes into planning and administering that program. We work with the kitchen team to plan the menus. There are specific guidelines that we have to follow for those menus. And then we also always have two AmeriCorps Vistas or interns here with us each summer to help us with cooking and delivering and serving the meals at the site. So shout out to Cecily and Cora, our, our summer meals interns for this year. Um, over the last couple of summers, we have provided between 4,000 and 5,000 meals through that to kids through that program. This year, we weren't able to start the program until July, but just during the month of July, we served 2,800 meals to kids through that program. Um, and this year, of course, due to COVID-19, once again, we have, have had to make several changes to the way that that program is run. So rather than serving hot meals every day, we're actually delivering bags of food that provide about five meals to the kids twice a week. So if a child is going to the sites those both times during the week, they receive up to 10 meals. 
Um, and yeah, we've had to get really creative with the type of items that are on those menus this year because we're not so focused on sending hot food. So um, one of the things, the new things that the kids got to try this year were these fun snack kits that we put together, more like healthy, healthy lunchables. And then we also um, have been sending sandwich kits and things like that to the kids. All right, so those are really all of kind of the main responsibilities of the dietitian team. We are involved in a variety of other projects at Open Arms that help to raise awareness of the nutrition program throughout the year. Um, so for example, some seasonal projects that we always have going on are helping with the Thanksgiving meals that go out as well as the blizzard boxes that we send out during the fall. Um, we always put together little booklets, handouts, things like that to send to clients during those times. Um, like for example, during Thanksgiving, we'll send handouts that have like recipes that clients can make with the leftovers that they have from their Thanksgiving meals. Um, also, prior to prior to COVID-19, we were hosting monthly cooking classes along with our chefs every month in which clients came to our building and focused on making a couple of different recipes. So hopefully sometime soon, um, we'll, we'll be able to start hosting those again. And um, we also work with our communications team if there are any, any specific nutrition information that we want to put out on social media or the website, blog posts, things like that. And then we're really here to just educate our chefs and our client services team and our volunteers and other staff members just about kind of the why behind the meals that we provide and um, why, why the nutrition specs that we have are so important to us. And that's, that's it. <laughs> so much good information. My gosh, I was taking notes. Bree, you were awesome. You were a powerhouse. That was a lot of just really good information. Like just it's ranging from what a register, registered dietitian is to how you work with our chef team. I have questions before we get to everyone's questions. Um, people are commenting. First of all, um, Joe says, very cool, Brie, on YouTube. Thanks, uh, Joe, for commenting there. Um, also, I have um, Jackie is going to be a dietetic, dietetic intern with Open Arms here come September. So, Jackie, we're excited to have you as part of our team. So, very fun. Um, so, I have a couple questions. So, because I'm selfish. Um, so, I'm going to ask Jade this question. Um, and Bree, you can jump in. But Jay, this is for you. What meals would never go away uh, because clients give such positive feedback about those meals? Because you mentioned, uh, Bree mentioned that clients help determine which meals we keep around at Open Arms and send out to our clients. Which meals are the most popular at Open Arms? That's a great question. I think some of the first ones that come to my head that are favorites of clients and staff alike, because we also get to try and eat these meals for lunch too. Um, one of them is the turkey taco bowl. It's a bowl that has rice, ground turkey, um, like pico de, gallo, pico de gallo and some corn in there. Um, so that one's very popular. I'm trying to think of another one. Um, some of our marinated salads. So we have a chickpea grain salad that I think a lot of people enjoy. That's more of a fresh item versus frozen. Mm. So I think that is kind of the reason behind that one too. And that one is delicious. I will also add that our beef lasagna is, oh, a, yeah. is a fan favorite. Amongst our beef clients. lasagna? I don't know if I've had that one yet. I'm going to have to get that one to go. Uh, that's amazing. Okay, so Brie, um, you know, this was a question that came in when people registered, um, and thanks to everyone watching who registered for this Lunch and Learn session featuring Open Arms Dietitians or Registered Dietitians, Brie and Jade. Um, so Brie, um, a lot of sweets go out of our doors, you know, tens of thousands of cookies every single week at Open Arms. Um, so how do cookies get thrown into this medically tailored meal business? Um, is that is the question is 
are cookies calorie dense? And because open arms clients need calories in any form, how do cookies become a part of all of this um, meal? And how, as you as a registered dietitian, you know, I have this persona that all registered dietitians eat really healthy and don't have cookies ever at their homes. So how the heck do you let a cookie slide by in a meal? <laughs> That's a great question. That is one that we get all of the time. <laughs> so <laughs> um, <laughs> Open Arms' mission is to nourish mind, body, and soul. And those cookies and other desserts that we send are that soul and that mind part of the mission. Um, we send four desserts in every client's delivery. So that means they're not getting a dessert every day. They're not getting a dessert for every meal. They're getting a dessert for every other day, if that. And all of our desserts are homemade. That is important to mention. And we do also have some guidelines that we follow with our bakers to make sure that what we're sending isn't going to completely throw off our, our clients' nutrition goals when it comes to the dessert. So they're all portion controlled. And um, I think it's important to think about the fact that even though they aren't um, super nutrient dense, they do bring a lot of comfort and joy for our clients. Another thing I do want to mention too is that I think most people have experienced what happens when they're told that they can't have something. If you're told that you can't have cookies, you never have cookies again. Well, all that you're going to want to have then are, are cookies. And so our hope with sending these is that we are kind of preventing, preventing that from happening, preventing our clients from maybe ending up overdoing it on something that is probably going to be a little more unhealthy than the homemade cookies that we're sending. Right. And I should mention that we send cakes, birthday cakes to clients every year on their birthday, on the week of their birthday, when um, they get their delivery. And I know for uh, many clients that we get the feedback, client services receives the feedback that that's just a bright spot in, in, in whatever they're going through, whatever life throws their way, that they received a cake from us and a card um, that, you know, it's just those simple things that, you know, it, it's not this huge, massive cake either, you know, it, it, but it's a, just the simple gesture that someone is thinking of them. Um, and that little thing, especially during COVID goes a really long way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jade, I have a question for you. And I know uh, Brie touched on this a little bit earlier, but how has COVID-19, this pandemic that we're all living through, how has that affected how all of you go through the nutrition care process? So like assessment and what else that you all do? Yeah, so the interesting thing is in some aspects, it hasn't changed because in the way that we serve our clients always has been over the phone. So we're still able to reach all the clients that we're, we were reaching previously. That kind of aspect of it hasn't really changed. But what has changed more is the topics of conversation. So a lot of our clients, as Bree mentioned, are, might have difficulty getting to the grocery store or can't go to the grocery store at all or have a difference in the people who are helping them get them food because they're not able to see them as often or that, you know, their social aspects have changed, those kinds of things. So really the topic of conversations have kind of shifted in a way in not focusing for every client at least, not focusing on a specific nutrition or health goals that they're trying to reach. But for a lot of clients, it's just getting them food in general. So providing, you know, our meals, making sure they get those everywhere, every week, finding other resources for them if they need that um, for additional food as well. And one thing to note too, is that we have changed our application process slightly. So we make we, we, we changed the application in order to be basically more simple and more easy to sign up and get our meals as soon as possible because that's really important at this time. And because of that, our nutrition assessment kind of page on the application form was shortened quite a bit. So we're not getting as much nutrition information right off the bat when clients are starting, but that just means that we're asking more questions when we're meeting with the clients and getting more information directly from them. Um, there's comments coming in. I'm just going to read some of them here because um, <laughs> they're they're entertaining. Uh, cookies make people happy. Back to the cookie conversation because I know that's a commonly asked question. Um, cookies make people happy. That's why we send out cookies. 
Um, uh, I back, I have a question for Bree. Um, uh, back to the meals um, and what we send out, uh, we rotate through what we make so people aren't getting the same beef lasagna every week. Um, and people ask us, you know, when do chocolate chip cookies come back into rotation? When does XYZ come back into lo uh, rotation? So I know volunteer Nancy is watching back in the building in South Minneapolis. She wants to know um, when do fall soups uh, like pumpkin soup and squash soup, when do those come back into play? That's a, that's a good question. Probably in a couple of months. Um, that would be, that would be more a question for our food services director. Oh, okay. Have. They get to answer that. So yeah, we'll definitely and, talk to him to make sure that those, that those get added back. <laughs> and let me, let me sneak preview this. So our lunch and learn series, uh, we've had three so far. We, uh, and you can watch those on our YouTube page. Just look down. Um, and, uh, fortunately, our series is going to continue um, come September, late September, um, and we'll announce details coming up here in the next few weeks, but starting in late September um, and into October, we're going to introduce you to our chef's team. So Chef Blake and his team are going to share their favorite recipes. Um, so we'll save that question for Blake and maybe we'll make pumpkin soup for you, Nancy. Uh, you never know. Um, Bree, another question for you um, coming from our YouTube channel. Um, live, oh my gosh, the technology. Um, how do you determine portion sizes? Yeah, that's, a, that's another great question. So we actually follow the recommendations that are provided by the USDA dietary guidelines for all of our portion guidelines. So we have specific portions that we have to follow for grains, for vegetables for both non-starchy vegetables and starchy vegetables for proteins and and so on so that's kind of how how we determine that okay um and then how do you determine like which vegetable goes with which like entree does that is there a science to that um not necessarily it, it really depends on what diet that we are planning for though so okay um with like the renal menu for example we have to limit the amount of potassium that is on that diet and many different vegetables and fruits are high in potassium so that means that there's certain things like potatoes for example that we can't include very much of on the renal menu so we have to focus on on different different vegetables that are lower in potassium um i would say we try to just include like a, a variety of, dif of different vegetables on all of the other menus so that clients aren't getting, you know, broccoli over and over and over again, or green beans over and over and over again. Um, yeah. Jade, I have a question for you. This is Bree and Jade, two registered dietitians with the Open Arms of Minnesota. You're watching our Lunch and Learn series. I'm Mike Marcotte. Uh, Jade, question for you. So how do uh, you and your dietitian team, how do you work with our farm manager, Kelly Wilson, who's out at Open Farms? We have five uh, organic farms in the Twin Cities. How do you work with Kelly to determine what to grow for the meals that you are creating with our team of chefs? Yeah, so that actually does also happen more closely with the kitchen team. So the kitchen team will tell Kelly, you know, what, what foods they're making for the week, what veggies they might need. And if she has those in stock, she'll bring them in and we'll use those in the meals and kind of vice versa too. So if Kelly has an abundance of say beets, then the kitchen team might be able to find a way to add beets to the, to the recipes for that week. Okay. So about five to 20% of the produce that is produced at the farms is going in our client meals and all the rest of it is going toward like CSA boxes that are going out and other farm initiatives too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get a lot of produce from Kelly and the farms. It's over 13,000 pounds of produce every summer um, and she she's out there until Thanksgiving um, some years um, harvesting. It's incredible what Kelly does. So if you haven't watched that Lunch and Learn um, that we uh, did uh, earlier this summer, I uh, encourage you to take a look on our YouTube channel for that series um, and take a, a look. And she answered some great gardening questions that you sent us as well. Um, I have a question for Jade again. Um, so people are asking about some culturally specific diets um, or, uh, and culturally specific menus. 
Um, one is including the Mediterranean diet. I know it's pretty popular with a, a good set of people. Um, can that be added? Um, is, is that kind of a diet that you already incorporate into a lot of the meal plans that Open Arms serves to clients? Yeah, right. That's such a good question. The Mediterranean diet is a diet that has been, you know, studied the most extensively amongst all the diets. So it is one that is recommended quite a bit for, you know, different categories of people and that type of thing. Um, the base of the Mediterranean diet is incorporating whole grains, incorporating lots of fruits and vegetables, um, adding fish into the diet, and limiting saturated fat which all four of those things are things that we are incorporating into our meals, especially our heart healthy um, standard menu that we do serve to most of our clients. So while we don't label it Mediterranean, it does have a lot of those kind of aspects of the Mediterranean diet. And the reason we don't label it that way is because we don't want it to kind of get stuck in the label. We want it to, we want to create our menus so that they can work for a, huge variety of different people. Of course, we have 1,400 clients, over 1,400. So not everyone is going to want fish four times a week or something like that, or maybe they don't prefer that. So we try to offer, you know, use some of those aspects of the Mediterranean diet, but offer lots of different pieces to that as well. Um, but also when talking about culturally specific menus too, um, there are so many other culturally specific menus out there that just haven't been studied as extensively as the Mediterranean diet, but are also just as healthy. So um, we try to kind of think about that too. Mm -hmm. I know that some have already been introduced and, and due to COVID, some had to be taken away and we're, you know, working to get some of those back, I know. Yeah, yeah. So we, we previously had some culturally specific menus and we're doing our best to get those back in as soon as possible. Um, it might, might take a little while through the pandemic, but we definitely want to work with our clients that fit in those culturally specific, you know, bubbles so that we can serve them food that is comfortable to them and familiar to them because food is so personal and it's so important to be able to serve that. Right. Uh, Bria, question for you. Do you, uh, does Open Arms have a medically tailored meal plan for those with autoimmune issues? And if you don't, um, which of the available meal plans that we currently have um, would best suit an individual with those issues? Yeah, so this, this one is, is tricky because so the, the, the quick answer to that is, is no, we do not currently have a menu that is planned specifically for autoimmune diseases. There are lots of different autoimmune diseases though. Um, type one diabetes, celiac disease, MS, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and all of those have their own nutrition requirements. So it is tricky to fit all of those requirements into one diet. With that being said, and then it's also individualized too. Like every single person with type one diabetes with MS has their own restrictions and requirements. So yeah, so with that being said, clients who have an autoimmune disease can work with our dietitians who can help determine what menu we currently have would work best for them based on what, what exactly their needs are. Um, I have a question and um, you two can uh, determine who wants to answer this one. Um, this is coming live from our Facebook uh, feed. Uh, do medically tailored meals help people with side effects from certain medicines, um, including uh, we should touch on our nausea care packs um, as part of this answer. But uh, are there certain foods that really help with nausea? Um, if so, what they are. Um, I know that we do have some nausea care packs that we send out with clients. And how does that um, kind of play into factor into how you plan meals with, all, with our chefs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's kind of two parts of that. So the nausea care pack, which provides basically food that's just easy to tolerate when you're feeling nauseous. So we, it has like crackers, jello, ginger ale. Sometimes there's tea in there, um, really yogurt, just food that's easy to digest and tolerate when you're not really feeling like eating so that you can still get some calories in. But we also have our bland or flavor neutral menu that we offer that can assist with certain clients who have like taste changes. Certain foods are just very off-putting to them. 
what let it be like spices or as, as, acidic foods or foods that are just too flavorful. So that menu really works well for those types of clients too. Uh, very good. Um, people are seconding the turkey taco bowl, by the way. Sarah's seconding the turkey taco bowl as one of her favorites um, at the Open Arms Kitchen. So we're not going to get that off the menu. And we're, we won't let uh, chocolate chip cookies go anywhere anytime soon. I know those are pretty popular as well. Um, before I let you two go, uh, what is your favorite Open Arms meal? We'll start with Bree. I have to say, I have a couple of favorites. Go ahead. So the chicken tortilla soup is my favorite in the soup category. In the entree category, the turkey taco bowl. And then in the dessert category, yes. um, my favorite is the, the frosted sugar cookies that we have, but it has to be pink frosting with sprinkles. Oh, specific. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'll remember that for your birthday. All right, Jay, what about you? What are your favorites uh, in the Open Arms Kitchen? Yeah, one of my favorites that I always grab when I see it in the freezer is the Sloppy Joes with sweet potatoes. I love that one, it's great with hot sauce on it. Um, but also the chocolate chip sea salt cookies. I have to grab one every time I see them. Oh, those are good. I've had those too. There's a, there, uh, Carrie, our baker, was making peach cobbler cookies downstairs the other day, and I was able to snag one. And boy, those, you should go find those downstairs because those are going to fly off shelves, and <laughs> those are phenomenal. So that's my pick for one. Um, thank you, Bree. Thank you, Jade. Thank you for joining us. Um, it, uh, before you two log off here and before I wrap things up, uh, if people have questions about, um, their journey through open arms um, or if they have any other questions about becoming an intern um, on your team or uh, anything else how do they get a hold of you too yeah so they can actually email um, nutrition at openarmsmn.org if they have specific questions related to the nutrition department perfect awesome free Jade, awesome. Two registered dietitians with Open Arms in Minnesota. Thank you for so much information today. We really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. Yeah, and um, to wrap things up, thank you at home for watching our Lunch and Learn ser series here on YouTube. Um, we will continue our Lunch and Learn series this fall. Our chefs will kick things off on September 30th. It's a Wednesday at high noon. Um, and Chef Blake and his team will share recipes, some of their favorites, um, and we'll send out information in the coming weeks. So make sure you like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or Instagram to make sure you don't miss out on how to register for that next event in our Lunch and Learn series. It'll kick back off in September. Also, we're going to feature our volunteer engagement team. I'm hoping they're going to put on like a Broadway production, like a musical and lights about open arms. Um, I know there's some of our favorite staff in our building because they get to interact with all of you as volunteers um, in our kitchen. Um, so make sure you tune in for that. Also, our logistics team will be joining us for a lunch and learn series. How do we get out so many meals um, to our clients um, every single week, every single day? Um, so we're going to dive into how they do pack out um, and how we're actually now shipping out meals as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that coming up this fall. So those are in September, October. We'll announce more dates here in the coming days and weeks. So make sure you like us and follow us on social media for all of that. Um, I want to go rewind just a minute to the beginning where I mentioned that um, there's this really cool new bipartisan bill that was introduced in the House of Representatives um, just in the last couple of days called the Medically Tailored Home Delivered Meal Demonstration Pilot Act of 2020, <gasps> the MTM bill. So make sure you look it up on um, Google that on the internets, um, the interwebs, uh, the Google machine, whatever you want to call it. The, the whole gist of it is that this bill is going to establish a Medicare pilot program that would show the link between our medically tailored meals program, what we talked about earlier in this program, and the health of critically ill seniors. And 60% of, of, of our clients are over the age of 60. So uh, it's, it means a lot to Open Arms in Minnesota. Uh, Open Arms and other organizations in the National Food and Is Medicine Coalition support this bill. We're huge proponents of it. Um, so keep staying tuned to our Facebook and our social media channels. We'll, we'll keep you informed about what's going on. But if you want to look in a little bit more into it and um, write to your representatives in the House, 
um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't watched sessions one or two in our Lunch and Learn series, we'd invite you to do so here on YouTube. Le session one was with Kelly Wilson at an open farm site in uh, St. Paul. We toured the farm and answered your gardening questions. And then session two with, was with our CEO, Leah Aber Wells, and we answered your questions kind of just on the overall um, state of open arms in Minnesota and where we're at and where we're headed um, here as we enter into 2021. Um, it's already August. It's August 12th already. Crazy. Um, and finally, we're in need of volunteers as we close out summer at our kitchen in South Minneapolis. Uh, if you are new to volunteering with open arms, it is simple. Just head to openarmsmn.org. You click on volunteer. There's a big bar across the top. Click on volunteer. Click on new volunteer individual. And then you just sign up for a one hour orientation session. It's super easy. It's super simple. We keep social distancing intact during those sessions as well. Um, they're limited to 10 people per session. And then you can come into our kitchen um, and volunteer sessions are about two and a half hours um, and you can pick and choose online when you decide to, you want to volunteer with us. And we have um, orientate or volunteer sessions um, six days a week. So Monday through Saturday at our kitchen in South Minneapolis. Thanks so much for joining us for this lunch and learn session. Again, thanks to Bree and Jade for joining us as well and sharing their wealth of knowledge. And we hope you have a great rest of your day.